Hi guys, my name is Matthias. Welcome back. And today I present to you the ultimate missions guide for Deadside, where I will be covering everything you need to know to complete missions with in-depth knowledge and ideas that you might have not thought about, and ways for yourself to enjoy the game and find different ways to finish missions, you know, and try and see how you can use the buildings and all the various um, structures around missions to your advantage and then of course in-depth knowledge about missions themselves now our first mission here is um, an easy mission where we basically just down from the save zone and to give you a bit of details about an easy mission the easy mission normally gives you AIs with tier 1 loot, okay? Basically, all the time. An easy mission, most of the time, or basically always, will have um, AI with low tier loot. And they spawn at various locations. It won't always be the same. You will see, if you rush a mission area as quickly as possible, you'll see that sometimes they spawn in and they take their certain positions, but it won't always be the same. This location here is a great way to funnel them. Okay, you can use the stairs as well. The only weakness is that you can be um, shot from behind and from um, the outside. Okay, that's why the stairs are a bit of a better option. But, you know, this way, if you use your ears and everything, you can funnel them a bit easier. And if you're on the stairs, they can come through this entrance and they can come from the stairs, making, you know, um, making it more, a bit more difficult and a bit more risky. Um, regarding an easy mission, an easy mission will always have between 8 to 12 AIs, okay, in the mission area. Um... On average, I usually get about 11, okay? Like, I've gotten 11 AIs a lot, but um, on average, you can, you know, you can rely on 8 to 12 AIs on an easy mission. Um, a mission, of course, lasts for about a half an hour if you do not interact with it, okay? So, if you see a mission pop up and you can't go to it immediately, don't worry, you know, it will take about a half an hour for it to um, go away unless somebody interacts with it, which we will cover in later episodes, okay? Um, now, an advanced tactic that I'm going to discuss here that you guys might have not thought about on populated or medium populated servers is every time you die at a mission, you have to respawn... In, in a, at a certain town, at a certain location, okay? Now, most of us, um, if we die in the two, mi in the two mission zones, um, you know, by the harbor, by the Beregikov harbor, we, um, you know, basically spawn at the safe zone. Then we have to try and get a weapon or we have to get back to our body, but that's not always possible. So an advanced tactic that you can use is to put down a small crate, which you can put anywhere in the world, and try and put it in an area where not um, anyone will, you know, I mean, it's possible to find, but try and put it in an area where, where you never run past, okay, so that it's a bit difficult to find. And then all you do is you kill um, standard AIs, okay? Um, whether you've got loot or whether you don't have loot, just kill standard AIs and put a, a pistol, ammo, and clothing, okay? Preferably um, like pants, jean pants that has four slots, a shirt that has four slots, okay? That you can carry a few things immediately. If you don't want, you can just put the shirt in there because you will, of course, spawn with the pants. But yeah, kill a few AIs. And then all you do is you put the pistol with the ammo in there, your clothing, um, your shotgun or your S85 that you found on the AI. Okay, so you can put a um, secondary weapon in, your clothing, a primary weapon in, some bandages and even some armor if you want to, you know. Um, I wouldn't really put anything in the crate that costs you money or that is difficult to find, okay, because anyone can stumble upon it. And even if st somebody stumbles upon it, you know, um, they must really not be geared to steal the stuff in here, okay? 
They can throw it down on the ground, it's fine. The main purpose is so that you don't lose anything when somebody finds your crate, okay? So if you want to put about three sterilized, you know, four or five sterilized bandage um, rags in there, you know, it's up to you. But this crate enables you to get into action really, really quickly if you have to get back to the um, harbor from the safe zone, which you use your reputation points to spawn at, or if you have to get back to the other mission that's right next to the harbor, okay, just down the road, so that you can get a gun um, really, really quickly and try and get to your body without dying again, okay? Um, if you think you can safely get back to your body, you know, that's fine, but on a populated and medium populated server, you never know. Then for the mission area right north of the, um, of the southern safe zone, you'll probably want to um, spawn at Platava, which is closer, and right down Platava to the south, there's the secret little location, a little house on its own that not a lot of people come to, and you know, you can find AIs here, and you can just repeat the same steps, okay? Killing some AIs and putting loot in a crate so that when you spawn at Plutava, you can just aim for this location, get a gun, you know, and get to the mission area um, a lot quicker. Um, again, knowing about this location is great because even if somebody took the stuff in your chest, you know, if you didn't hide it very well and somebody, somebody was lucky enough to uh, sp uh, stumble upon your chest and take your loot, which is no loss to you because you can get it back quite quickly you still want to utilize this building here as you can see there's a s85 on the table there's a crate that you can find in here and then in the house itself there are some great um spawn points as well okay so you won't always find these guns here um it's always the percentage chance that it has to spawn okay so sometimes you'll come here and there's no gun but I'd say about 60% of the time when you run past this house and you go inside, you can be lucky enough to find an S85, you know, or a C19 pistol or a shotgun or an S85, any tier one gun, except that the house itself can give you a tier two gun. Um, by, and by that, I mean, you know, a Beretta or a C19 pistol, which will help you quite a lot. As you can see, just putting my chest down here, putting the loot in it, exactly what we did at the previous spot. Now, at the moment, with Deadside only having four missions, this is a really, really good strategy because you can cover all the mission locations at the moment. There are, of course, four. So with the first crate, we covered um, Beregovoy and we covered the mission area just up the road from the safe zone. And then with the second crate, we covered the... Lumber yard, okay, the lumber yard um, mission, which we will spawn at Potava, you know, and come through this route to get the gun. And then the only one we've got left is the one in the north, which I will show you now, okay. And as you can clearly see here, a C19 with the ammunition, okay. So never forget about this location. It clearly has um, various spawn points, you know, it just depends on your luck. And from here, you know, we can just take the gun and get to the mission, which is right below Platava, okay? Instead of spawning at the at the safe zone. If you want to spawn at the safe zone and you only want to use one crate here, um, later in Dead Side, you know, when there are more missions, if you want to minimize your crates, you know, it's fine. But for now, this is perfect with the amount of missions that we have, because with our three crates, we can cover all through, you know, all the spawn points that we normally use to get back into a mission. So maybe just something that you guys haven't thought about. Um, the other, th the other way you can use the crates is to place them at the mission location itself, very close to the mission location. Um, and the reason you would want to do this is if you don't want to buy the, the the biggest backpack in the game okay if you the stalker backpack only costs you about fifty thousand dollars so if you just want to run around with the stalker backpack you don't want to risk um you know the 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 big backpack which you're going to spend a hundred extra k on then you can just put a crate next to the mission area 
to put two primary weapons in. Okay, so what you can do is you can go to the mission with only a single primary weapon, and then if you pick up an AK, you can go put it in the you know quickly go put it in the chest, and then you kill some AIs again, and you fight again, and if you kill a guy and he's got a great weapon, then you can go put that gun quickly in the chest, and you can keep putting the guns in the chest, um, and just make sure nobody follows you, but just you know um, that is a great way. So even if you get killed. You still don't lose completely. You still have something. And grenades um, I use for various in various ways, which I will show you. One way that I use it is to have fun with AIs, okay? If I want to sort them out as much as possible and I don't want to run after them or I don't want to waste any time. Figuring out your grenade distance is um, very important, especially in missions. Um, especially if you encounter other players, you want to know, you know, exactly how far you can throw the grenade and how much damage the gr grenade does. And since this is the ultimate mission um, guide, I will tell you that the green grenade uh, th throws about 25 meters and it kills anything within about a five meter radius, you know, then it um, goes away. You, it can't hurt you if you've got cover behind anything and then the brown grenade um, the R5 and the green one is called, uh, of course called the F10. The, the brown one you can throw about 50 meters, but it won't kill people. It will only hurt them. Okay, so if you can get a drive right to throw multiple brown grenades in a certain location where there's like a clan or a group, you know, you can hurt them a lot and you can even kill them. But you can definitely disrupt them, okay, or try and get them out of a hiding spot. But for now, I'd say the green grenade is the only grenade that's worth it. So you guys can clearly see we've we've set everything up, okay? And like I say, here at the back, there's a lot of locations that you can use to put the to put the crates in. And yeah, the only thing that the large backpack does for you is it enables you to carry two primary weapons, okay? Which might sound really really good. It, I didn't even see. Yeah, yeah. There's a guy there, dude. If you don't see. Yeah, it, it just gives you three extra slots with two slots enabling you to carry two primary weapons. But you have to pay a hundred grand for it and you're gonna you're gonna feel if you're not playing with a clan, you're gonna lose a lot if somebody kills you, okay? So what I would suggest is of course um, I'm playing with the best gear here, but I always tell you guys to use the assault helmet and the assault vest because it's basically um, takes the same amount of bullets with any gun to kill you whether you're using the one or the other one the only difference between the best helmet and armor is that it protects more of your body you know and your arms like the the big one the the best armor protects even protects your arms you know when the assault doesn't but when it comes to surviving a motion shot you know or any kind of gunshot it literally takes the same amount of rounds to kill you, okay? The only difference is the um, police, the police vest, where the police vest, you'll get killed immediately if you get shot with a motion in the chest, and it does take less bullets to kill you, okay? So you don't have to worry about the percentages. All that you have to worry about is the amount of bullets that it will take to kill you, okay? And when we, look, when we focus on that, there's no difference between the assault, you know, and the best armor and helmet. Um, so yes, what I'm trying to tell you is to you don't have to waste your money on the 150,000 items. The guns are, you know, um, is up to you. I like the R5, which got less recoil and it sounds really cool. I like the um, VSD because it fires very quickly and it reloads very quickly. Where a Mosin, of course, fires much slower, but it reloads much slower as well. Okay, so when it comes to the guns, there are um, reasons why you would want to purchase a hundred fifty thousand gun, but there isn't really a reason, you know, to buy a hundred fifty thousand um, helmet armor or backpack when you use these strategies like the crate and the great thing with the crate is um with, 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 with the backpack you can just carry two extra weapons okay with the crate 
if you've got a good run, you can put six AKs in there. Like I'm, um, you know, I'm at a, um, at a hard or an epic mission now, and if I kill six AIs that have um, six AKs, I can't carry them on me, guys. I can only carry two. Okay. Maybe I open the, the maybe I finish the mission and I open the crate and there's a VSD in there or a P90, and you know now I have to drop. Like if there were six AKs, I can only take one of the AKs with me now because I want the other, you know, the other epic weapon. Where with a crate, you can put all six AKs in there, you know, and um, take take the epic weapon. Okay, because you, to use the strategy, you, you usually need to do the mission with one primary weapon and one secondary weapon, and then you can bring a few grenades as well. Um, but yes, um, if you never want to spend money, you know, if you never want to spend 150 grand and you think it's a waste of money and, you know, it puts too much pressure on you, then I would say the UMR um, that shoots 0.45 rounds does... 50 damage per round, where the other SMGs only does 35 damage per round. So the UMR um, will be your best option um, regarding um, SMG. Then um, you can use the C the C19, but it only shoots seven rounds. So if you miss a lot, um, use you know, rather use the Beretta. And if you want, you know, if you want to use a sniper rifle that can kill someone with one shot, if they haven't got any armor on them, then of course the any Mosin, you know, is perfect for that. You can even use the S85. You know, you just you just need to make sure you you hitting those headshots. And in the background, I am just showing you, you know, various strategies that you can use in missions. Okay. If someone's behind a door, you don't have to go around the corner and expose yourself. Just close the door and the AI will open the door automatically and then you can just kill him without popping your head outside, you know, getting killed by someone else. Um, I have finished missions like that and I always open the door to the outside so that, you know, the AIs get stuck there. So that um, if those were the last AIs in the mission and there are other people around me, then of course I can just close the door, kill it, and if I feel there's like a clan that wants to kill me, you know, I can just go hide and log out, okay? Um, because the chances that I'm going to die are very, very high. Or if I know the clan is only on one side of the mission area, then I can use my knowledge and my strategies, which I'm going to show you, you know, later in the video, um, how to counter that, okay? And when it comes to um, certain strategies, that is basically what we're going to do now um, to the end of the video. Is just showing you at every single mission location strategies that you can use. Like, for instance, they ca the AI can't see you through any fence. Okay, so when there's any fencing, you can use it to your advantage because the AI can't see you. And if any of you are on the um, dead side Discord, spam this, you know, spam this thing so that they can fix it. I do not like bugs, but I mean. I'm just telling you guys about it for, uh, for you to yeah for for you to have things a bit easier um, while it's still an option and of course it helps you with players as well um, so you can take out the AI you know and not focus on the AI when there are other players in the mission area. So yes, I like the crate strategy a lot. Okay, I get a bit nervous on populated servers with with getting the best gear, never mind that, it's, it's quite difficult getting the best gear on a full server, okay, let's be real, let's be honest with one another, um, now all the strategies I'm showing you is just ways to have fun, okay, it's not about um, the best, like Matthias, anyone can see you on a roof, bro. anyone can kill you, duh, yes, I know anyone can kill me when I'm out in the open, but I do not usually play on full servers, I play on you know, servers with about 20, you know, average of 20 people on it. So when I'm in a mission area and I'm fighting a group, you know, then I can usually use these um, tactics to my advantage. Like if I know a clan has gone into one of the factories, then I can quickly come up here without trying to rush them in the factory. I can quickly come onto the roof, you know, and get angles on them. Okay, and block the exits or see where they're going. Because if I'm not on the roofs and they run out of the factory out the back there, I wouldn't have been able to see them if I was on the ground. 
and you know if they came through the exit which i'm covering if they run into me and they sh you know they see me they can easily kill me but if i shoot them from the roof i can surprise them especially on a first person server okay and then of course there's no ai here at the moment but you can easily use this to kill an ai and you can use this factory if people without advanced tactics uses that door okay if you think people are going to use the door to come to you or climb over the wall then you can use the windows okay to wait for them in any case let's get to the details okay like i said an easy mission has between um 8 to 12 ais on it and it's not usually very you know tier one um guns that they have not too difficult um, you, you know, you can count the AIs as you kill them to relieve some pressure and to understand how far you are with the mission. So it's about 8 to 12, most of the time 11. Um, then when it comes to a medium mission, most of the time the AIs will also just have standard equipment on them. But this time it will be between 16 to 20 AIs. Okay, so threat level definitely going up. And um, most of the time, it's about 17 AIs, okay? But an average of 16 to 20. Then when we... So doing easy to medium when you're starting out are great options. Great options to get used to the AI. Great options to get loot. Because the only difference between an easy and an epic mission is every time you finish the mission, you've got a certain percentage of getting great loot, okay? Now, on an epic mission, your, your percentage chance of getting great loot is extremely high. You know, so uh, most of the time you'll get great loot, and then a few times you won't get great loot. But on an easy mission, most of the time you won't get any great loot. You know, and then some of the time you'll get something good. Like an easy mission can give you a UMR or an MP5 or a cool shotgun, you know, or something. And money, of course, which will help you a lot. And then a medium mission, you know, will be like 50-50 with giving you something or not giving you something. And then a hard mission will, of course, you know, um, also have a much better percentage chance of giving you great loot. Um, and yes, with a hard, so I put easy and medium in the same category because your threat level is the same. It's just the um, numbers, okay, which change. And then um, a hard and epic I put in the same category because on a hard or an epic you can get military AI, military scabs. Now this is where the difficulty level goes up immensely because if you enter those mission areas without any armor, it's basically gonna they gonna they'll be able to kill you with a Mosin, they'll be able to kill you with an AK, you know. And, they have very good weapons. They have the second best shotgun. They have the Mosins. They have the AKs, you know. So they are a really, really big threat level. And they wear armor. They have helmets on. Some of them have police police armor on, you know. So um, as soon as you kill one of them with armor on, really, really, you know, use it to your advantage. But yes, that's where the threat level changes. So now when you enter a hard or an epic mission, you need... With a big N, you need armor, okay? And because your chances of dying is so much higher, you probably did notice that, Luthias, there's four missions, but I can only put down three crates, so how do I cover, you know, all four mission areas? Basically, um, to hide your loot at the... At the Brigavoy Harbor is very difficult because people go there a lot. Okay, so I won't put a crate down there. And then this um, this area right here, just down the road from the south, um, is also very, very close to the you know to the safe zone. But I would just ignore the harbor, except if you think you can hide something really, really cool there, then it's fine. But um, hard. You know, hard and epic missions usually spawns on the uh, mission close to Platava and in the north, okay? So my primary places for my three crates would usually be mission areas where hard and epic missions spawn a lot, okay? So I'd rather put my crates at um, the other three mission areas at this moment. Later when they add more missions, again, 
I will look at how often I can get um, hard or epic missions in certain locations and see how often those guys have military gear. Because the best way to use your crate is if the AI have military gear because it doesn't help you, you know, doing a hard mission when the AIs look like this. Because why the hell will you risk constantly going back to your crate and putting away a weapon if it's not worth anything okay if you can get it anywhere in the world very very easily and yes some of you might say at the military points you know we can get these weapons very very easily but we're talking about the reason why anyone would need the biggest backpack okay and we're crushing that at the moment so yes um, you normally want to focus on the crates on hard or epic missions on easy and medium. You just want to get the crate, you know, get in and get out as fast as possible. And then, yeah, on a hard mission, the AI are usually between 28 and 32 AIs. Okay, that's a lot, guys. 32 scavs are a lot. And if all of them have military gear, that's a really, really big threat. And very difficult. It's very difficult for you to keep control or keep vision of all of them in such a small area. Okay. An epic mission. I've done an epic mission where there were 35 scabs. Okay, but that could have been a patrol that was part of it, like a patrol that came into the mission area. But I'd say you can be guaranteed of 32 to 35 AIs. Um, in an epic mission and then of course you can get you're gonna get ai's with a lot more epic gear on them not epic but there will be more of them with ak's and mosins and some of them will even have the best helmets on some of them will even have assault vests or police vests on them so they'll be protected you know a lot better and i don't know if their skill level is a bit higher but um, if i look at how many times i die between a hard mission and epic mission there's definitely a difference between hard and epic okay the reactions of the ai um you know i almost want to say are better on an epic mission that is just my my thoughts on it you know it doesn't need to be true um or there's no facts regarding that but yes, epic, you know, epic is um, the most difficult and I will never go, you know, if I don't want to waste my time, I will never go after an epic mission without a, an assault and vest, you know, assault helmet and grenades and um, good weaponry, okay? Because you cannot afford to peek your head into an epic or hard mission when it comes to these lumber yards, okay? Um, especially on first person servers people are going to wait for you in the rooms okay you can get camped so clearing these three rooms is very important to me sometimes i peek the one door and i start shooting and then you know i've had times where all of the ais come out of their rooms and i get overwhelmed and i do get times when i peek and they just you know they just headshot me immediately now if there are other players in the area or anything if there's you know if there's any other players in the area and they come in here with good timing then they can take all my loot okay so bringing three grenades at least minimum to the northern mission and bringing six grenades minimum to this um, double lumber yard you know in this mission area that i am now is a must because you can't afford to get surprised you know or die when there are when there are people in your area um so yes those are the differences between missions and <coughs> excuse me this little um bungalow here at the back of the northern mission in my opinion is definitely the strongest location like i say oh, there's not a mission here at the moment but there are 32 you know highly geared scavs on an epic mission here and you want as little space around you as possible now if you know people are in the lumber yard or you know exactly where players are then that's the only time you're going to climb up this thing okay to get a why again get height get more vision of everything to spot someone and it's not a lot that they're going to look up okay and there are various ways 
you know, so there's various things for you to use, like this little cement block here, okay, which we can use to get in and protect ourselves against most shots. So yes, um, use everything. See what you can figure out. See what works. Um, in missions, it always works to hit and run. When I say hit and run, I mean hit and relocate. I think even in the military or in any tactical team, you know, um, hitting and flanking is, or just flanking overall is a very, very big tactic. So standing still not only makes your chances of getting killed by AI a lot higher, it makes the chances of players, you know, flanking you, um, shooting you in the back of the head, you know, or getting to your location and outnumbering you, it makes that a lot higher as well like if you've got a great spot like a bungalow you know yes the, the players will struggle to shoot you just like the ai will struggle but the thing is they use grenades ais don't use grenades okay so blocking yourself off in a little room like these ones here are not always the best idea okay because if i come into this location you're gonna die okay i'm gonna throw grenades and you're gonna have to get out of the out of there and then i've then i'm going to use you know the um the ventilation pipes and everything to my advantage to get height on you so these little things that you play around with and figure out um really gives you an edge especially if you're not you know shroud then you need tactics um, to help you survive against the ai and against players as well so yeah one great tip that i have for you guys is try everything okay don't do an epic mission 500 times and go where well, this is boring try different things even if you die that's not the point the the reason you play a game is to have fun are there times where you want to be competitive yes sure that's why i do eh, weird things like this to give myself an edge and you know work out different strategies to get a leg up on my opponent but the main reason you're playing a game is to have fun, okay? So that's what I want you to focus on. So yes, um, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you very desperate ways to not lose your loot, okay? I've only used this method once when a clan of five was chasing me, and funny enough, it worked, okay? Um, I was overwhelmed. I knew I was going to die. Um, they were chasing me through a forest and I ran past a rock and an idea just came up by me. Okay, just all of a sudden um, the idea came up by me and I never knew it would work. But because I experienced it, you know, I'm going to share it with you guys. I was really nervous. I couldn't take them on. I knew I was going to die. So it's either lose my gear, okay, which was very very expensive gear you know or um you know just die which i've done a thousand times but this time i just thought um i'm not crazy about these clans you know five players playing together i am at a disadvantage they probably deserve the loot but i'm going to try something okay and at the moment i'm just showing you guys various ways to get a grenade into a room okay i know there's normally ais in the room but i'm just showing you various um ways to use the grenade bump it off a door or whatever um so yes what i'm going to show you is using the suicide function so if you're extremely desperate and you have got a crate um you know or you're trapped and you think you're definitely going to die but you feel you're gonna throw your, you know, you throw, you're gonna throw your um, screen out of the window if you die. If you get very, very angry, then um, please don't, you know, purchase any hacking software. There are various ways for you to, you know, take the stress off yourself a bit. Here I'm just showing you that if you know exactly how far grenades travel, you can test them out always because you know, you always, if you've done enough missions, you know where the crates normally activate okay and then you can test those crate locations to see if you can kill players you know with grenades at a certain distance like where do you have to stand like if that crate activated i'll be able to see it through the wall now i suicided behind this 
um, this log, okay, to simulate what I went through last time. But I sat there for half an hour to tell you guys that if, no, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, sorry, 20 minutes. If, you know, you die, your body will stay in the world for 20 minutes. That is not true within a mission area because as soon as they complete the mission, then bodies will despawn usually in about five minutes, okay? But, and what I'm showing you here is, um, if you want to know if someone's in a mission zone or not, if you're not sure, okay? Um, you can always activate the mission by letting the AIs render, okay? Like the AI spawn into the mission area, and then you can go away from the mission area. And you don't have to go far. I went 500 meters. You can only go two or 300 meters. If the mission doesn't despawn within five minutes, disappear in five minutes like it will now, then there's someone in the area. But if there's no one in the area, then it will disappear after five minutes. So I just ran 500 meters away, and after five minutes, the mission disappears. Now, that's one way to know if people are there. The other important thing is if you die, you've only got five minutes to get back to your mission area. Okay? You've only got five minutes. And I was playing on a first-person server, and... Yeah... Basically, I ran, and you can just suicide immediately, so that you can feel you, know, you can fall behind a tree or you can fall behind a rock. And then, if it's a first-person server, even if it's a third-person server, if they didn't have vision of you for at least ten seconds, and you can get behind something and suicide, they are not going to see you guys. They are not going to see you, and then you can just respawn immediately and talk to them. You know that they that they don't think you have logged out and you can just say, ah, I got away with the loot, you know, so that they can forget about you. Different strategies like that. But in any case, guys, I hope you understand why the video was so long. Yeah, I'm just showing you it's very difficult to have vision of a body when it's lying behind something. I hope, I, I hope you've learned something. If I left something out, please leave it in the, you know, in the comments down below. And... Yeah, uh, remember you've only got five minutes to get back to a mission, so if you haven't got reputation points and you spawn three kilometers away, try and spawn closer to the mission area because it takes you two and a half minutes to run a kilometer, okay? So three kilometers is going to be seven and a half minutes. You can't run more than two kilometers to get back to a mission area. In any case, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And yeah. Have a great day, guys. Have a great day. Enjoy Deadside. It's all what you make out of it. Cheers.